If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistener Elf. Welcome to my new favorite recording spot. This is a gorgeous part of my yard. This is where I live. <laughs> this is awesome, how verdant it is. I wanted to tell you a bit of a, a magic story while I'm thinking about it. Not magic gameplay, this is from outside of the game, but it isn't something that happens just every day, so I wanted to uh, fill you in. So, first let me give you some important context. It is 2014, and I've been playing the game up to this point for long enough to know that certain cards are worth well more than others. Certain misprints are worth well more than others. I guess this one isn't technically a misprint. Um, relatively recently before this, I had learned of something called Summer Magic. Uh, for those that don't know, Summer is a reprint of Revised. Uh, revised cards, third edition, were washed out, <laughs> faded looking, uh, and they had some print errors, like getting an artist name incorrect on a card. And so, Wizards of the Coast seeked to rectify, saw it, to rectify this issue by having another print run with a, another company. And uh, they did fix some of them. The cards generally weren't as light, although some of them, especially the green cards, were too dark, actually. And they still had some quality issues, like again, messing up an artist's name. And so, for quality reasons, they very quickly discontinued the set. However, for whatever reason, some boxes were already shipped out. And this is where the story, as far as I'm aware anyway, dips into legend. Um, according to legend, some boxes went out to England and some went out to Texas of all places. And then from there were opened and distributed how a card normally is. Uh, so you can tell that it's a summer magic card by being a, a bit darker than a revised card. And at the bottom, you'll see that it says 1994, whereas a revised card did not. The value, of course, comes from how rare they are. There weren't that many printed. And so even the commons can fetch a pretty penny. Obviously, the dual lands will. But even a common will do that. So, with that context, I'm over at a game store in Athens. This was before Dragonstar Hobbies and... Uh, card Advantage were opened. Um, I, I won't say the name of this game store because the two I just mentioned are, are better stores, better customer service, more focused on Magic the Gathering. So if you live in Athens, one of them instead. And I went through their bulk and I found... So I remember I was trying to build some popper deck. I think it was Delver or something like that. And I'm looking through their, uh, their white-bordered cards. They have a huge chunk in their, in their blue bulk box. And I'm flipping through, and I find a card that's darker than the others, and so it stands out to me. And that is Unstable Mutation, is what I found. It took me a second to realize that it was summer. And then when I did, I was excited. I almost freaked out. I almost let everyone in the neighborhood know how crazy I was at the moment. <laughs> I was a, a little bit happy, just a lot. In the, at, right after that, though, after holding in my screams, I panicked. It flipped. Uh, when you suddenly stumble across that much money, that can happen. Now, the right thing for me to have done, uh, the moral thing for me to have done, would have been to go to the store owner and say, uh, hey, this is a really valuable card that you have. I just wanted to let you know, I'd like to try to buy it from you. And then if he still offers it for 10 cents, excellent. I lucked out. If not, I still did the right thing. It's weird to say, but in the moment, that thought literally did not cross my mind. I, just, I was, like I said, I panicked. Uh, what did cross my mind, on the other hand, which seems so stupid in retrospect, was, hey, wait a minute, I should buy more cards to hide this one, to sort of dilute it, um, so that he's less likely to pick out that individual card. In retrospect, that was idiotic because it it looks different anyway if you put other cards to set it side by side with that makes it stand out more 
<laughs> but in that moment, when you just suddenly stumble across what I later found out was, I think it was Troll and Toad was the website, but I'm not 100% sure on that. It wasn't Star City Games. Uh, that at the time it was worth $150. I didn't know the exact value at the time, but I knew it was worth something. <laughs> so in that moment, for whatever reason, that's how I, that's how I reacted. So I bought it's the most random <laughs> blue cards that you could come across, and I don't even remember. I think there might have been like a brainstorm in there or something maybe to make it worth something. But no, no, probably not. Probably just the most random blue cards ever. And I went up to the front and he just, he, the store owner probably didn't even know what Summer Magic was. He wasn't that engaged in magic. He played other games. It's more than just a magic store, etc. Um, and so he just very quickly, you know, okay, you got him. And I paid a dollar. There were 10 cents each, 10 of them, uh, plus tax. And came out with a card that was worth $150. Now, I didn't end up selling the Unstable Mutation, I ended up trading it um, for some promos, <laughs> a few promos. Uh, but I did end up playing it in Bant Bogles. Uh, I, I didn't want, so I bought it, I put it in a perfect fit, and then I did the thing where I put it upside down in the next sleeve um, that I've done for years now at this point. And I wanted to take it to Dragonstar Hobbies, but I didn't in Bant Bogles because I was worried that someone would know that it's summer and it would make my deck more likely to be stolen. This was before, um, yeah, I'm, I think this was before Dragonstar Hobbies had their security cameras where that wasn't as much of a concern. Uh, but in any case, even if there are cameras, still doesn't keep it from being stolen, just helps them get caught. So, um, but, I did play the deck, unfortunately that means I didn't play it on camera, but I did play the deck against people that can verify that. Uh, the one that I played the most with uh, I, was my ex, so a lot of good that does me now. <laughs> oh well. Um, and then I think Devin Cox, I also played with him, uh, played against him using that deck while the card was in the deck. I'm not 100% sure about that though. Um, but that being the case, it was an unstable mutation. I didn't have it for too, too, too terribly long when I was actually playing it. It was mostly just sitting there in my collection, sitting there in my binder, actually. You know, yeah, you want to keep your collection from being stolen. Let's keep this expensive card in our binder. But in any case, um, yeah, so that's a, that's a card I had for a while. When, for a long time, your most expensive card that you own is a common, <laughs> that's saying something, I suppose. All right. Well, take care, Magic Community. I will see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>